I follow the data. I have one of my websites is called stateofourclimate.com, and uh, the, here's that uh, EGU showing very clearly everything is accelerating. This was in 2018, that's just last year. And at the top here, <coughs> you see the accelerating species extinction, um, uh, which people tend to miss out when they're writing and presenting about global climate change. So everything is getting worse faster, and that means climate change and emissions and climate deniers, um, this is a multiple of all evils. Uh, you remember Stonewall Jackson, he made the famous um, uh, Civil War statement that war is the sum of all evils, and war is, and that's a major reason. War and preparation for war is a major reason why we're not getting a handle on carbon dioxide emissions. But to describe, uh, to take a leaf from his book, uh, climate disruption is the multiple of all evils. It's a great multiplier. So we've got CO2 accelerating faster and faster, global warming is accelerating, ocean heat and ocean acidification are accelerating. Now literally this is a death sentence. This literally is a death sentence to our planet and our future. Uh, this is a relatively simple one. This is accelerating sea level rise. Um, this is a study which is published that proved that sea level rise is accelerating. Uh, it, it, it's a great indicator. Global surface warming is not a good indicator. It sounds very complicated and actually it is. It's not a good indicator of what we're doing to our climate. Sea level rise is quite simply because sea level rise is due to two things. It's due to the heat that goes into the ocean and most of the greenhouse gas heat is going into the ocean. Heat expands water, so the ocean level rises. So that's a very good direct indicator. And the other reason for sea level rise is the melting of the glaciers on land. So th 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 we couldn't really actually have a better indicator than sea level rise because it gives us both the direct impact of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and the indirect impact of their effect on the planet in the form of, mel of melting the glaciers. I um, have to mention this. Um, we, um, we're being put on um, a suicidal policy. We've all been put on death row uh, by our governments, by our leaders who are working for the fossil fuel corporations um, uh, and do not act in our interest any longer. Um, <coughs> We've been known for a long, long time, I mentioned it earlier on, that global emissions have to decline by 2020. This, this has been um, published by every single um, intergovernmental organization, not only the IPCC, but from UNEP, from the OECD, from the World Bank, from International Energy Agency. They're all showing, they've all shown for at least five years, uh, charts like this, showing the global emissions of carbon dioxide increase at an accelerating rate in the black and then in 2020 both for 2 degrees C and for 1.5 degrees C emissions have to come down. Give it a year. Give it your best year. If everybody does a little, talks about it, uh, writes about it, talks about it, write about it, um, uh, we're, we're on the tipping point. Um, with the vegan diet aspect, we are, we are definitely on the tipping point. Okay, the doomsday clock is another bit of news. January this month has been advanced to two minutes to midnight. Um, this doomsday clock has been going since um, uh, the uh, days of um, the nuclear arms race with the USSR and the big threat of nuclear annihilation. Now they put it to two minutes to midnight because of climate change and nuclear weaponry again. And um, the only other time it's been at two minutes was back in 1953. And that was because of the real threat, the fear of, of that I and some of you remember very well. So this was a very, very important report. The report by the IPCC published in October 2018 on the 1.5 degree C limit, and it confirmed in no uncertain terms that that is the danger limit 
1.5 C is going to be disastrous, but 2 degrees C is absolute total catastrophe. So it is a great advance and good news that the scientists are completely behind the 1.5 degrees C limit. It's also very good news that this report told us that emissions had to be cut from uh, by 45% uh, from 2010 by 2030. So from now we have to cut emissions of carbon dioxide 50% by 2030. That is not hard to do. We have renewable energy technology and science coming out of our ears. Um, uh, the other really good statement that came out of the IPCC was that this means rapid, far-reaching, and unprecedented changes in all aspects of society. Everything has to be converted. Everything has to be converted. The world has to be rebuilt, right? The entire world has to be rebuilt for clean, non-polluting, everlasting energy. Now think about that. That happens. That's a golden age for humanity, right? Um, unlimited safe energy. And the more you make, the cheaper and better it gets. And the more people buy, the cheaper it gets to buy. Which is why the fossil fuel industry have this evil campaign of forcing us to stay dependent on fossil fuel energy. But the truth, the terrible truth is out with the IPCC report. This headline says, terrifying climate change warning, 12 years until we're doomed. The, the 12 years is a bit misleading. We've got one year to get us on the survival scenario where we need to be in 12 years. But hey, look where I got this from, Fox News. I mean, when Fox News puts out a headline like this about climate change, I think we're beginning to win. <laughs> They got it from the New York Times, and uh, they repeated this rapid, far-reaching, um, uh, unprecedented changes. So um, emissions of carbon dioxide are increasing, and there's been a huge increase last year, 2.7%. And this is because governments are continuing to um, uh, right off our future by subsidizing the fossil fuel industry with vast amounts of money. And it happens in all countries. It, it, it's widespread. Um, the, the definitive study was done by the International Monetary Fund of all agencies in 2015. So um, a 2 point cent increase is huge, right? In one year. And uh, as I say, consider that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is global heat and it is ocean acid acidification. So this has to come down and it can come down relatively easy, except this is Exxon's idea of an energy outlook. It's an idea that will end the future. So um, Exxon 2016 and then uh, 2040, substantially more fossil fuels being burnt. And then Exxon has a little section in which it says it cares about, you know, uh, climate and everything. Um, uh, oh, no, 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 no. Exxon is um, destroying the climate and destroying the planet. We all depend on our health and our very survival on the climate. All of us, you know? Animals, birds, fish, human beings, all of us. So I, uh, I put the survival scenario down there. Um, which you've already seen. So January 2019, CO2 hit 410 parts per million for the first time. Um, uh, 410, there it is, that's obviously accelerating from 1960. It's very, very obvious. Um, the 300, the 800,000 year limit of carbon dioxide was 300 parts per million. So. This is more than a third higher. It's something like 37% higher. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. 